Hi, it's Eva Cartman, and you are listening to the Dream Big Podcast Show, the place to go to learn, laugh, and grow. Today we welcome the king of big wave surfing, Laird Hamilton. I always love having guests on the podcast who are true pioneers and inventors that had a dream that had never been done before and made it reality. Laird is one of those rare big dreamers, and I am honored to have him as my guest. This is episode 161. You ready? It's time to dream big. Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. We're inspiring you to shoot for the moon, take aim and go. We bring to you amazing guests who truly love what they do. Every day they're living their dreams, and so can you. Are you pumped yet? It's showtime. Let's rock and roll. Hi, Big Dreamers. Before I introduce Laird Hamilton, I wanted to let you know that you can now get my free Confidence Secrets course, which is over one hour of me teaching you about how to develop your superpower of self-belief. We are going to be taking down this Confidence Secrets course very soon because it will be part of the Academy, which we will be launching shortly. If you are a younger big dreamer listening to this, please ask your parents to help you get this free Confidence Secrets course while it is still available at dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. Okay, now let's turn our attention to this week's amazing guest, Laird Hamilton. It is not very often that I interview a guest who has had multiple full-length documentary movies made about them. Usually, I have to watch a bunch of different YouTube videos and speeches and read articles to learn enough about a guest to prepare for an interview. With Laird, my family and I watched the movie Take Every Wave, The Life of Laird Hamilton, and I knew we had to invite Laird on the podcast. We were thrilled when he agreed. Laird Hamilton is best known as an American big wave surfer and a pioneer in the world of action water sports. As part of Laird's quest to ride the biggest waves, he actually pioneered new surfing techniques and inventions, including, among others, toe-in surfing, where a separate person on a jet ski pulls you onto a wave, and also foil boarding, which is hard to describe, but is shown in the documentary where you're actually standing on a board above the waterline. Over the last decade, Laird has transcended from surfing to become an international fitness icon and nutrition expert. Many of today's top professional athletes and celebrities look to Laird for training guidance, including instruction in his unique underwater resistance workouts. I'm so excited for you to hear this interview with the legend himself, Laird Hamilton. So without further ado, let's roll the tape. Hi, Laird. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for being my guest today. It's my pleasure. (laughs) To prepare for this interview, my family actually watched the documentary about your life, Take Every Wave, and we really loved it. And we recommend that everyone listening watch it as well because you have had a fascinating life. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been like a roller coaster. (laughs) (laughs) Given all the success that you have achieved in your adult life, One thing that I think would surprise a lot of people is that you did not have the easiest childhood. Your biological father left your mom while she was pregnant with you. You were constantly in trouble at school, and you were constantly bullied because you grew up in Hawaii at a time where your classmates were mostly native-born Hawaiians. So as a white, blonde-haired kid, you look different. Can you share a bit about those childhood years and how you found your escape in the ocean? Well, I, I think whenever you're different, no matter what the reason, it it forces you to kind of maybe go inside and and look for things that make that you can do that that even if you're different doesn't matter. And I think sports are great for that. And I think that that the ocean was great for that. In the ocean, it didn't matter if you were different; it just mattered how well you could survive in the ocean. Wow. And I know it was not the easiest childhood. So one thing that definitely did develop during that time was, as you said, your love of the ocean. 
and specifically, you really loved surfing. And there was one problem. So at the time, there was no way to make a real living as a surfer, as it was not one of the established sports it is today. So I understand that you worked lots of other jobs from construction to modeling and even acting so you could continue to do what you really loved, which was surf. Did you ever imagine that as you were doing those other jobs that one day you would be able to actually get paid to do what you love, which you've now done with your personal brand inventions and sponsorships? Well, I let's just say I hoped and I did believe I did believe that I could, but it wasn't looking very good uh, because it was difficult. So uh, I I would say, yeah, I believed I could, but there were times that I doubted it because I wasn't able to. And so I would do anything, uh, any, any, any job I could get a hold of to try to, you know, survive. Uh, And then eventually over time, uh, the opportunities came that I could start to use you know, my, my skill in the ocean. And then, and then it it branched out from there into, into innovation and, and, and some more creative stuff. But, but yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I wasn't sure um, if I was going to be able to, but I did believe in my heart that I could, and that's what kept me going. It's so inspiring to our big dreamers because it shows that even if at one moment there may not seem to be a way to make a career out of what you love, if you continue to follow that passion and that hope that it could become a reality, even if it means funding it by working other jobs, then one day with enough hard work and dedication, you can definitely find a way to make that your full-time job, right? Absolutely. I, I, and you just... I mean, I think that that having a dream and believing is the most important thing you can do in your life. And the one way to to see if people really have a lot of belief in their dream is to see how hard that they continue to try to pursue it. Because, you know, it's easy to give up, but you can never achieve a dream and do something if you give up. So you have to continue to believe that you can uh, and, and the strength in which you believe is what will allow you to continue to pursue it. So if you really believe with all of your heart that you will be able to, then you will just continue to work towards that. And, 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 you know, I have a saying that I always write down, all things are possible for the believers. So if you believe it, you know, now my wife would say, you know, it's hard to be a gymnast if you're six feet three, but that might be a little bit of a, uh, you might be a different, you might be in the Cirque du Soleil and not in the Olympics, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that, that is very inspiring because it just proves to our big dreamers that just keep on trying and, and your big dream will become a reality. We talk a lot on the podcast about the importance of pushing outside of the boundaries. So if we ever had a guest that defines pushing the boundaries, I would say that would be you because not (laughs) only do you push outside of your own comfort zone, you push outside of the comfort zone of what everyone believes is possible. So can you share what it is that you love about big wave surfing, riding waves that are so big that they're seemingly impossible to ride? Well, one of the things I like is about it is that the feeling that you get when you're doing it, you feel like you're part of of nature you feel like you're part of the ocean and that you you uh you leave your identity behind you're not a man you're not a surfer you're not a human you're just part of of the big sea and something about that is an amazing feeling that that is difficult to experience any other way so I, i really like that that to 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 experience that feeling that only you can do by doing that. And, and, and then you, and then you're always very uh, happy when you, when you are able to successfully do it. Uh, And at the end, you're always hungry and tired, which is important. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Because I did want to point out for our young big dreamers that while Laird does push the limits of what is possible, he also respects the power of the ocean and is incredibly disciplined in his preparation. 
So in the documentary, uh, you share some of your workouts, which have become world famous for being both extremely innovative and challenging. Can you talk a little about the training you do? And more importantly, why you take your training so seriously? Well, I, I, I you know, the, the, the preparation is, is everything. And so, you know, it, it's all about the preparation. You know, if you're a basketball player, you shoot free throws. You know, if you're if you're, uh, you know, a cyclist or a, a swimmer or a runner, I mean, it's all about your preparation. So preparate that your training is your preparation. And and that builds confidence. The harder you work in your preparation, the more confident you will be in your activity. So uh, we take it highly serious. Uh, and, and, you know, I was saying uh, potato chips in is potato chips out, which means <laughs> if you eat. If you eat garbage and you don't do and you don't do any preparation for your activity, then don't be surprised if you don't do it that well. And so I, <laughs> I, I take it I take it seriously for that reason. And and, uh, and and then we make it you know we make it difficult. We try to simulate what we could experience if if we get hit by a giant wave. And so part of it's that. Part of it's is is that we try to simulate things uh, in, in a way so that it's not such a surprise if, if something happens. I think that is such a good lesson for our big dreamers that while it's important to push outside of your comfort zone, it's also important to be aware of the dangers and challenges of what you're doing and prepare to the best of your abilities. Always, always pushing outside your comfort zone. The fact is, is that the more you get comfortable with discomfort, the less discomfort you'll experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as part of your quest to ride the biggest waves, you've actually pioneered new surfing techniques and inventions, including, among others, toe and surfing, where a separate person on a jet ski pulls you into a wave, and also foil boarding, which is hard to describe, but as shown in the documentary, where you are actually standing on a board above the waterline. So can you share what drives your innovative spirit and what is your big dream for how these innovations will ultimately impact the sport? Well, uh, first of all, I, I, I like, I get bored easily and I, and I really like new to do things I haven't done. I think that's probably the most important aspect uh, of my, of my innovation kind of love is, is that I look for new ways to do things so that I can experience these things in a new way. Now, normally I I'm working on trying to ride bigger and bigger surf, which means I'm looking for techniques that will allow me to be able to go out in these bigger conditions. Now, the result of these innovations usually is that other people adopt the techniques or the equipment and begin to use them. You know, stand up paddling was one of my one of, of my uh, projects and now it's one of the fastest growing sports in the world and they do it, you know, all over the world. And, and it was something that I was doing alone for a few years. And it's interesting to, to do something and be one of the only people doing it. And then eventually to see, you know, thousands, maybe if not millions of people doing it, it really gives you a feeling um, of accomplishment. And it makes you feel like you're not completely crazy because if you're the only one that's doing it and you think it's great, then you maybe, maybe you're not completely right. But when you see all these other people having that same experience and enjoying it, that, that lets you know that maybe you were correct about your feelings. I love your attitude that if something does not currently exist, why not make it? There were these massive waves that nobody could paddle into so you thought, well, what if a jet ski tows me in? And now with foil boarding, you are reimagining the size of the waves that surfers can ride and the duration that you can ride a wave. If you think outside of the box, you can always make your big dream a reality. Absolutely. And it might not be exactly like you see it, but it might be even better. <laughs> <laughs> Two of my dad's best friends, my uncle Arash and Babak, love surfing and we're very excited for this interview because you're like the Michael Jordan of surfing. 
<laughs> I asked them if they had any questions, and they both wanted to know how do you balance being a dad and a husband with constantly chasing the nar. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's important to to have balance because it makes you better at what you do. I feel like if if everything's okay with with my family. Uh, and my, with my, you know, with, with my loves, if everything's okay with my family, then I can go and, and ride giant waves and, and, and do this, you know, and be a warrior better. Um, if, if everything's not all right with my family, then it would, then I would, I wouldn't be able to, to do it. So I, I participate in, in, you know, in, uh, in the, in the life of my girls and, and with my family. I'm, I'm, I'm active with my family. And when I don't have to be somewhere else, um, I'm, I can, I'm with them and I spend time and engage and participate. And, and, uh, and I think that's the most important part of the balance. So we try to work on the balance. It's like the preparation is a piece of it. The, the, the visualization is a piece of it. Um, but the family is, is one of the most important pieces. And if, if you're not good with, if the family's not good and you're not good with the family, then you will not be able to perform at the highest level. So I try to make sure that I have good relations with my friends and, and most importantly with my family. That's awesome, Laird, because I know from the movie that your beautiful wife, Gabby, has been incredibly supportive of your passion. So you two are really partners in life. That is true. And I would say, I would say without her, I don't know if I would uh, have been able to do the things quite like I've been able to do them. I think she's, she's brought me a lot of strength and, and a lot of support. And, you know, sometimes when you, when you're doing things like this, you need all the support you can get because you can get discouraged or you can be, get hurt and you need, you need that kind of love to give you strength. <laughs> Before we end this interview, I have a couple last questions for you. You ready? Always. If you go back in time and talk to your 10-year-old self, what would be the best advice? Be patient and try not to break so many things. <laughs> Great advice. What trait do you have that has enabled you to take your big dreams and make them reality? relentlessness i think well i mean there's a couple but maybe the relentless pursuit just the willingness to just not give up no matter what uh it no matter if i fail or get hurt or or in i just don't give up don't give up your dream that's amazing advice for our big dreamers because big dreamers you can make anything happen and even if you get discouraged don't give up those ever yeah ever ever, ever 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 remember those are your four key words don't <laughs> give up ever <laughs> when you have doubted yourself in the past what made you overcome those fears and continue to pursue your dream well i would i i think it was the fact that 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 i had had practice at it i think that i had not given up and in and then i had I had gotten rewarded for that. And then when I, when I went along and I started to think about giving up again, I remembered that I had been rewarded for not giving up. And so then I didn't give up again and then I got rewarded again. Mm -hmm. And then, so when I doubted again and then I, so it just keeps going and it's a little bit like a train track where every time, you know, you think you might give up, you look back at all the work you've done and all the things you've accomplished. And you look at that long train track behind you and you go, okay, well that's been working. So don't give up now, put another track down and keep going forward. I love that because it's amazing because one, it, it just shows that if you don't give up, which you should never give up, then um, more, more could be in store for you. Like if once you heard that there was no way to be a paid surfer and you had given up, then where would you be today? Probably still at one of your other jobs or just, it just shows that how powerful your decision could be. So never give up. Ever. Yeah, ever. <laughs> 
You have already made many of your dreams a reality, but if you look at yourself today, what is your big dream for the future? Well, I, they, it continues to be the dream that I had when I was little, which is the pursuit of, you know, other than just other than uh, than having a beautiful family and and ra- and raising kids and trying to trying to keep being in shape and being uh, you know a, a good uh, a good boyfriend to to my girlfriend or a good good husband to my wife just to be and and then to try to ride giant waves so it's in a way my it, it, it doesn't it it's it hasn't changed it just continues on and and doesn't it seems like there's no end to it i just keep wanting you know there's a famous saying never let your dreams be bigger never let your uh never let your uh, memories be bigger than your dreams and so i'm work I, I, my dreams are much bigger than my memories and so i'm always thinking about bigger higher faster <laughs> <laughs> i love that and for our very final question where can our audience find out more about you? Oh, well, you, the movie tells you a lot. I mean, there, we have a lot of different things. I have some, you know, I have some great, uh, super foods. Uh, yeah, I have layered super food that you can learn more about me, but more about stuff that I use. And I have XPT, which is a performance XPT life, which is a lot about all the training and stuff that we do. A lot of the preparation that we do. Um, you know, you can go to lairdhamilton.com. Um, there's a couple other films that I've been in. There's some books that I've been in. Um, there's a great book called the wave. Um, that's got some great, uh, it's a, some great stories in it. And there's, uh, some older films that I've, that I've been involved in it as well. And, and, but yeah, but you know, that hopefully there'll be more excuses for me to make, you know, more films. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was my pleasure. And you're, you're a great interviewer. Uh, I, met, I met Gabby. She interviewed me. So um, I can tell you, I, I know what a good interview is. And you're, you're an expert. And I really appreciate you. And I appreciate, you know, promoting dreaming. Thank you so much. So remember, big dreamers, check out Laird's movie. Go to LairdHamilton.com and... Check out the book, The Wave. Thank you so much. Aloha. 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 Bye. Bye. A huge thank you to Laird for being my guest. We will include links to the documentary in our show notes. You truly have to see Laird in action to appreciate the size of the waves that he rides and his contribution to the sport. As always, all the links to everything we discuss are in our show notes at dreambitpodcast.com slash 161. Did you enjoy this special episode? If so, please tell your friends and family about the Dream Big Podcast. If everyone listening could just tell one person about this episode, that would lead to a chain reaction that would get the Dream Big Podcast in front of so many new people, which would be amazing. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever we release a new episode. Finally, if you're interested in being part of the Dream Big Academy, please go to dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. And right now, we are giving away the Confidence Secrets course for free. We are going to be pulling this free course down very soon, since it will be part of the Academy when it launches. So have your parents go to dreambigpodcast.com slash beta to get the free course that includes over one hour of me teaching you to become more confident, which is the key to achieving your big dreams. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Eva Cartman reminding you that you have unlimited potential. Your dreams are not optional. You need to make them essential. So take massive action to turn those big dreams into reality. Live with passion the way life was meant to be. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.